Hey, what's up, guys? Y'all sit down. Shut the door. We got to talk. You guys, what is going on over in, over in Kensington Palace? If you guys don't know, Kensington Palace has officially lost the plot. Did I not tell you guys that William was like Joffrey from Game of Thrones and they are in the middle of their red wedding? You know the saying. Why are they losing their minds? Why are they running around like a chicken with their head come off, cut off? For what? To what end? What truth is so groundbreaking, so central to the strength of that Mickey Mouse made up blood right monarchy that they are literally going all out? If you guys didn't see my last video, go watch it because I think it's one of the best videos on YouTube. There's a whole playlist on the Royals and also where is Kate? But let me uh, start with the shameless self-promotion and get to it. I just did a video about the way um, literally William and Kensington Palace are saying that it wasn't weeks of him being him and his courtiers being incompetent, throwing Kate under the bus, so to speak, or anything like that. It wasn't William and his incompetent staff that colluded with the British media, the Sun, no doubt, to release a series of fake blurry photos and allegedly fake uh, videos to a skeptical public. It was Russians, Chinese, and Iranians, if you guys don't know. Kensington Palace is trying to say that China, Russia, and Iran are reportedly behind the spread of conspiracy theories, slurs, and rumors about the Princess of Wales. Can I just point out the hypocrisy and the irony that they are starting their own conspiracy theory about themselves? Senior government figures are said to believe the states deliberately peddle lies on social media in a bid to destabilize society. I love their self-importance, like I said before, that saying Kate got a BBL literally is destabilizing the government of the UK. Baby, please. But I started thinking, why, why, why? I go into that in a different video, but I started thinking in this video, why would they do this? Why are they self-destructing? Why are they so desperate? to quiet anything and they are taking a hammer to a fly in order to squash the rumors. Why indeed? Because that last video of Kate in the 48 hours since it's been out, every one, I'm going to say every, but there are so many talented graphic designers, video editors, and people that specify, that specialize in AI and they are now coming out to say that they do not believe that, well, you know what? They don't believe that that was Kate in the video. Now, let's be clear. Everybody believes Kate's sick. Everybody believes Kate has cancer. However, the experts are starting to come out, and what they say will shock you. You guys, I know I did a video about this a couple of days ago, but new evidence has emerged, and we are going to play it. Because unlike Kinzen and Palace, it thinks... That this is 17, 1774. I know we got independence in 1776, but they were trying this mess in 1774. And this is not 1776. We are not under a king. We are not under a, me, um, a monarchy. And we will not take a knee to liars, people that spread propaganda, and people that are trying to gaslight a whole country, a whole world. I do not care if there are other royals who are like, oh, please, you guys are so stupid. We know our government lies to us. I don't care because your government's not coming over here lying to me and your government will not silence us. So let's take a look with no further ado at what some people say is the evidence that the royalist, that Kensington Palace does not want you to see. Listen. I want you to at least listen with an open mind. This is for educational purposes. Don't listen to me. Don't believe anything I say. This is all my opinion. But look at what I say and what I present with an open mind. And then you go do your own research. And come back into the comment section and let me know what you think. All right, let's go. Bye. I'm with you. I don't know what to believe anymore. And uh, after looking at the video for a while and after seeing this side by side of Kate in a video from 2015, I believe, and this video of Kate on the bench, I am now completely 
unconvinced that this is her, this is her and the people that are saying that this video is AI, I'm starting to believe them. There's a few reasons. Now, I put this one first because I want you to notice something. Now, I'm a photographer, I'm also autistic, and I, I notice there's certain things I'm going to notice um, from a photography standpoint, but also I notice proportion. Now, this video from 2015 of Kate in the sweater Look at the size of her head versus uh, how big it is, um, and then from her from the bottom of her chin down to the down to the the beginning of the sweater. Okay, so the general size of her head, and then also the the size of her head this way compared to her shoulders. Now, and then this when I first saw the video, I was like that doesn't seem like her body she's quite wide at the top and Kate is not when Kate is thin she's very slim everywhere she does not have wider shoulders in this in the video here and you can see her head looks correct she's got the exact same hairstyle from here to here as in this photo which is interesting but look at the size of her chest her head is smaller on her body compared to her chest. But the other thing I thought was interesting, and now I actually believe that they use this video as a base for whatever they did here. Look at her, well, for, on our side, this would be uh, your left looking at it and the right. Look at the right side of her shoulder, how it's higher than the left side on this video clip as well it seems to be the same way. And I think this is actually a mistake with the AI, but this very much does not look like her correct proportion. And there was, there would be nothing, no, there would be no injury, no nothing that would make your shoulders and your chest wider than it normally is. I've got about 30 seconds of this video and there are three things I want you to notice. That top shoulder, that stays high and never resolves itself, the highlights of her hair don't really change when she moves her head, that's not possible. The other thing, when people talk, your nasolabial folds will move along with you. Notice how hers hardly move and when they, when they try, when they, they don't move here from this angle, ever, ever, okay? When they start to move here, they glitch. Now, I'm specifically trying to speak without using my voice to act like her, but yeah, AI, this is AI. I actually didn't mention anything about the sweater in my last video, but now that you've mentioned the sweater, I would like to talk about a few things about this sweater that are a little bit wrong, and I'm also a clothing designer. Now, one thing that you can be absolutely sure of is that whatever sweater Kate Middleton is wearing, it's going to be perfect. Now, most of the time when you're creating stuff, you're knitting a sweater, you know, or you're, you're, you're creating clothing, uh, it's, it's basically based on symmetry. When you create a pattern, for instance, for a top, you're folding it down the middle. That way the, 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 the two sides are exactly the same which would mean that when you do knitting as well, um, even if the, the, all knitting is done on a machine and there's a computer program that tells you exactly um, how many inches from your sleeve cap, and the, or the, at least in mine is a drop sleeve. On hers, I can see there's a slight point where her sleeve cap starts. You see that little point? And then we, when we go here, you can see the point right there. Okay, now here's what's sticking out to me about this sweater that, you know, she didn't buy some bargain basement with, um, you know, bargain basement sweater that has um, imperfections. Look at the distance between this stripe and the sleeve cap. Okay, now I keep saying there's something wrong with the shoulder here. Now look at, oh, I can't get over there, <laughs> to the sleeve cap. And you can see that tiny little um, thing. That is the, the, the little where the curve just isn't quite a curve and it's a bump and that's because that's where they attach the sleeve to the shoulder. 
Then um, down here, no one has noticed the um, rogue uh, little stripe, the 12th stripe that does not resolve itself and go all the way around. That I can't point to it. Right there, okay? Um, what is that? I counted the stripes on this on each sleeve. There's 11, except this one has a 12th one right there. And I checked to see, was it the resolution of this um, stripe here? It is not. Uh, it, it wouldn't make any sense and it wouldn't end there. So yeah, the, the sweater doesn't feel real. No, differences in lenses are not going to change, especially if there's no tilt in the camera. We're looking at Kate straight on here. No focal point is going to shrink your head and make your, your, your shoulders wider than they should be. Also, I kept looking at this, this, this video and her hair, and her hair looks just like that video from 2015. And I thought to myself, has she been wearing her hair like this? at all in 2023. So I went searching and found this article, Kate Middleton's Royal, St Royal Style, Every Outfit Worn by the Princess of Wales in 2023 so far. And I thought, you know, this is gonna have a lot of photos. It's gonna have photos from, you know, long angles and up close angles. And we're gonna be able to take a look at the size of her head in proportion to her body. And also what her hair has looked like in the last, four or five months. I only went back to September. Okay, this photo, her hair is back, but I did notice that she has this kind of um, natural area where she parts her hair, because you can see even the hairline tends to pop back right there. Also, this, this photo is from December 5th. Take a look at her eyebrows. Um, she does have one eyebrow, as we all do, that tends to arch a little bit higher than the other, but not that high. Also, the focal length on this one, it, the, the person taking this photo was not that close. And you can tell by the difference in how it's slightly blurry behind her here. This person's a little bit uh, behind her. These people are over there are a lot behind her. And the photographer is probably 20, 30 feet away. So this is a longer focal length. Um, and you can see it's not messing with her natural proportions. Kate is slim here. In fact, as I started looking at all of her dresses, she generally has a little bit of a shoulder pad put here to elongate her shoulders even more. So this is Kate with a long focal lens and shoulder pads. Now let's go back here real quick and see how massive her shoulders are here and, and how small her head looks compared to her body also Hairstyle, she hasn't had this hairstyle in months, as we will see. The photos are all now out of order. So these are all between September and December, but you can see here, and, and again, I have a larger head compared to my body. <laughs> so does Kate. She has a larger head and she has she has um, thinner shoulders, which is probably why she does the shoulder pads for the, for the formal dresses, which I've noticed a lot. And here she's wearing just a t-shirt and you can see how slight she is here. Another one, and this is from farther away, longer focal length, okay? And you can see larger head. <laughs> uh, her, she does not have wide shoulders here. There's no shoulder pads. Now on this photo, one shoulder does look to be larger, but she is pulling forward and that other shoulder is pulling back. But this is how Kate looks with the longer focal length. I believe this, this photo was October. She's been doing her hair different. She has not been doing that swoop thing since... I think 2015. As I went through, I, I, she, she's a designer's dream when it comes to, you know, like dressing her. She's very easy to dress. The shoulder pads are here too. They're right there. They're built in. They're sewn into the seam. Um, and, and also there's that little roll to, to create that beautiful, um, you know, uh, almost shelf and drape in. It's beautiful, beautiful. I think this is Jenny or Pac-Man or whatever, but beautiful dress. Uh, but you can see the difference between the size of her head and her shoulders here. This photo is also from December and her hair has been darker than seen in the photos. She doesn't have the same highlights. Um, so yeah, she could have been wearing extensions, but the, the hairstyle is weird and, and, you know, that's definitely not her body. Look at the size of her head compared to the, her shoulder width in every single photo. 
Here she's got massive, massive shoulder pads. Love this dress. This dress is great. At this point, this is just a Kate uh, Middleton's uh, outfit appreciation and her hair appreciation pose because her hair looks fantastic and real in all of these. She does shoulder pads in her jackets as well, slight ones. Uh, and again, you can see larger head, uh, uh, you know, not her shoulders are not wide. Her shoulders are, are narrow, even with the, the pad. Great jacket, great fit. Love all of this. Okay, massively long focal length. As you can see, the entire, if you, this is a People article. If you go to this photo, the entire background is blurred out behind her, which means this is a very long focal length. And narrow shoulders, even with a tiny bit of a, a shoulder. Uh, it's called like a, it's not called a shoulder cap if you, if you widen it a little bit. Anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, there is no focal length that is going to change Princess Kate's basic proportions. She has narrow shoulders that are just slightly wider than her hips. She's very proportionate. In fact, I don't know how tall she is. She looks to be about 5'9", because she's very, very proportionate. Like I said, like I said her head is just a tiny bit big for her body. That's okay, I got a big head too. But yeah, this is why I believe that this ain't her. Just, it's not her body. I want you to watch this video with me. AI has come along more than you can imagine, okay? This is two years ago, and I'm gonna show you some other deep fakes from artificial intelligence, AI. Just listen, okay, and understand that 2024 and moving forward from this point on, we're moving into a very dangerous time where we don't know what real is anymore. So you're gonna to have to forgive us conspiracy theorists for trying to make sure that we double, chip, triple, quadruple check what is real these days, because look what is possible. This, of course, came as a huge shock. And William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately. Yeah, and I, I just really became um, attached to it. I became attached to the characters. Sí, y realmente me he encariñado con ello. Me encariñé con los personajes. Will and Kate, thanks for joining me. Now, before we get started, just nod your head if the royal family is holding you against your will. I thought so. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. As I've said to them, I am well. I guess. As I've said to them, I am well. Taking great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a call team who have taken great care of me. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, serious. This is a serious one, guys, serious one. <laughs>